kinetics in kinetics in addition to the parameters we learned about the motion in kinematics we have to consider force which is causing the motion plus the geometry of the motion so in kinematics we were dealing with only geometry of the motion that is it deals with the velocity acceleration displacement etc etc but in kinetics we will be dealing with the forces which is causing the motion also okay so whenever we talk about kinetics the first thing we should remember is newton's laws of motion newton's laws of motion sir isaac newton formed three laws of motion the first one is every body continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force so every body continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force that means if a body is staying in rest if there is no external force acting on the body the body will continue in that state of rest or if it is moving with a uniform velocity it will be continuing in that uniform motion or uniform velocity and if a, an external force is acting on it its state may will be changed if it is if the body is in rest and an external force is acting on it then the body may change the body may change its position that is it may move or it will have a tendency to move if your body is in already uniform motion if a force is acting on it the body will change its uniform movement that is the velocity will be increased or decreased so that is first first law then second law is rate of change of momentum momentum of a of a body is directly proportional to acceleration to the force to the force acting on it rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force acting on it that is we know what is momentum momentum is mass into velocity momentum is mass into velocity so if a body changes its velocity from u to v on application of a force of a of a number of forces and if sigma f is the net force sigma f is the net force that is algebraic sum of the forces then the second law of motion states and says that sigma f is proportional to the rate of change of 
momentum or it is equal to or is proportional to rate of change of momentum or change in momentum by time that is mv minus mu by t uh, that will give sigma f is proportional to m into v minus u by t or it is sigma f is proportional to m into a where a is the acceleration a is the acceleration okay so uh, sigma f is proportional to ma so in newton's second law this equation can be written as sigma f equal to m into a or this can be written in an, in an, in a, in an equation form sigma f equal to m a or in a simple form we can say f equal to m a where in this equation relation the proportionality constant is selected as unity proportionality constant is selected as unity okay and the unit of force is newton so one newton is that force which causes an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in a mass of 1 kilogram so that is 1 newton okay so the unit of these things are selected in such a way that the, the proportionality constant is uh, 1 or unity in the equation sigma f is proportional to ma so the equation will become sigma f equal to ma where sigma f is in net force acting on the body or f is equal to ma so this is the case of a body moving under the effect of a force with an acceleration of a meter per second square and whose mass is m okay then the third law of motion is third law is every to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that is third law to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so frictional force is such a reactive force that is if we apply a force p on this body which is resting on a rough horizontal su surface a friction force will be developed uh, in between the surfaces or if a body is resting on it and weight w is acting vertically downwards then the surface below will offer a normal reaction rn which is equal and opposite so that this body will be will be in equilibrium so that is to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction 